first came the AC and now comes the DC. This is another absolute must in the woodworking shop. In this video, I'm gonna be installing my dust collection system. And I am very fortunate enough to have been able to partner with Clearview Cyclones on this installment. Clearview is a family owned business that is made right here in the US. And they just released a brand new metal unit called the Pence EF5. Yeah, it's pretty, right? Look at that. Thing. I mean, on the outside, wow. Yeah. I was excited about this because I wanted to store my unit outside of the shop under that covered patio to cut down on the noise inside of the shop whenever it's running and to also save on the footprint the unit creates inside. The plan is to have one long main trunk running across this north wall of my shop so I can have drop downs to all of my larger machines that will require DC. Of course right now I don't have that many machines but I will certainly be adding to my collection in the future. Now, even though I'm housing the unit outside, I'll be keeping the filter inside so that I will have a way to recirculate my heated or cooled air. And I will get into more details on this later in the video. To start the process off, we started by test fitting and constructing the main trunk along the floor. I'm going with an eight inch main trunk line, then the down shoots will taper into a six inch line. I worked with Clearview beforehand to figure out where along this back wall my tools will be placed, both my current machines and my future machines, such as a jointer. This allowed them to put together a diagram we could work off of and made this part of the process go very quickly. Of course, everything can be moved around in the future should I need to move things around or add additional machines. But the main components are the Ys that will create a downshoot from the main trunk, blast gates to shut off the different sections of the run, and elbows to soften the turns to keep a smooth track for the air to flow along. For the ductwork, you can of course go with PVC, which is what my good friend Jay Bates did, and he published a wonderful video covering his install. I will leave you a link down in the description below. For my install, I went with Norfab ducting. It is more expensive, but it's reusable system that is not only very quick to install, but it's also extremely customizable. Instead of using adhesives or rivets, the components use a clamping system to join parts together. So we started off by laying out a dry run of an entire branch. Once things look good, we could very quickly start joining things by mating up the two ends inside of a circular clamp. All in all, it only took around two hours to put all of the ducting together. And the best part is, if I ever wanna change up something in the future, all I have to do is unclamp the section I wanna modify and change out the components. With that done, we moved outside to set the motor in place because this placement will dictate the position of the main trunk line inside. We placed it as high as possible because I wanted that main line to be up and out of that highly usable lower zone on my shop walls. The unit I'm going with is a five horsepower cyclone designed by the one and only Bill Pence. If you aren't familiar with the name, Mr. Pence is widely recognized as one of the leading figures in dust collection technology, and he solely works with Clearview. The Pence EF5 is a five horsepower unit with an 18 inch turbine. We mounted the motor to the cyclone inside the shop, but once you do that, the unit is pretty darn heavy. Now two people can lift it, but since I went so high with the mounting position on the outside, we had to bring in the tractor to assist in getting it up to its bracket. While we get that installed, let me circle back to having the unit placed outside. Now the big pros are the reduction in noise inside of the shop and also the lack of an additional footprint. However, the disadvantage is if you have a heated or cold space, then this is a giant vacuum that will be pulling out that controlled air and disposing of it outside, which will make heating and cooling your space not only harder, but also more expensive. The workaround to this is to have the motor placed outside but have the filter inside so that after the air goes through the cyclone and deposits all of those larger shavings and chips into the collection barrel, you have the option to route it through the filter and then deposit it back into the shop, keeping all of that heated or cold air in your space. And that's what we started working on next, drilling and cutting two holes in my brand new shop wall to route both the intake and exhaust lines. I used a bit long enough to punch through to the outside from the inside. Then I came back with a jigsaw to cut the hole exactly to size. They were all so pretty too. Dang. Man. 
And in case you're wondering, yes, it was very nerve wracking. The top hole will be the intake. So when the DC is turned on, it will pull air and collect sawdust as I'm making it from my machines. It will then come through the intake of the cyclone where all of the heavy particles will drop down into the 55 gallon barrel, which is hooked up to the bottom of the cyclone. Then the air with those fine dust particles in it will be routed to the bottom hole of the shop, which leads to the filter inside. The filter goes down to a 0.5 micron and its job is to collect all of the fine dust particles that the eye can't see before spitting the air back out into my shop. As a bonus, the guys also included a Y on the exhaust port here to give me the option to vent the fine dust directly outdoors. This way, if I'm not running my AC, I can switch around the blast gates quickly and vent right outside instead of bringing it back into the shop. This might sound a little odd, but I just think the unit is so pretty looking. But okay, let's move back inside and get the ducting hooked up. This goes together very, very quickly at this point. Each section is lifted up and it is best if you have three people for this job. One person to clamp it to the previous section, one for strapping the current section to the wall with some plumber's tape, and one for supporting the branch with something like a broom. And man, does it change the look of a shop once it starts going up. I had thought to paint it before installing it, but I'm so glad I did it. I absolutely love the industrial look it gives the space. The main things to keep in mind when installing these sections is to make sure your blast gates and Y components are facing the correct way. Of course, you also wanna use a level to make sure it comes out looking sharp in the end. We went through beforehand and made marks so that we could quickly throw it up without stopping. Same thing when clamping on the down shoots. Use a level to get them straight and plumb. This particular down shoot is for my future jointer and planer. Since they won't be in use until I buy the machines, we placed an end cap on both. However, I think I'll come back and make one of them into a floor sweep. On the runs that go to machines with a four inch port instead of a six inch, such as this one that goes to my bandsaw, a reducer fitting is put into the line to taper the size down so that a flex hose can be connected with a hose clamp. I did the same exact thing over on the line going to my bench top thickness planer. Oh, also on this tool, since I want to have the ability to pull it off from the wall to run through longer stock, I made sure to leave myself a good amount of flex hose. The last run to make was the line to my table saw, which required the trunk to be suspended in the air so that it would stay in line with the main trunk against the wall. I found two trusses to throw in a few hooks, then use some paracord to capture the line and hold it in place. And while I was working with Paul on getting the line up for the table saw, Cody was awesome enough to be working with James on handling the electrical bit for the collector. Now when I built the shop, I planned for this installment and left a dedicated 220 circuit for the motor over in this northeast corner. This 220 will be used to run the motor, but since I also want to run the unit with a the remote, they also had to tie into a 120 line for that relay. Cody removed the wall panel to run all of the wiring needed, shimmied it back into position, then connected and installed the control box. Yet another hole was drilled through my wall to get this power cord to the exterior unit. Although this one was much smaller. After getting the motor hooked up, Cody flipped the breaker, Clearview gave me the remote and I tested her out. The first thing I did was see how much dust it sucked up off my hands. It worked pretty darn well. Next I opened up the blast gate leading to my table saw and just watched this flex hose as it removes all the sawdust that's inside my cabinet. It's incredible. In the future, I might look into automated blast gates, but right now I'm just using a longer bar clamp to open and close the second half of my main line, depending on if I'm using the bandsaw or table saw. Oh man, and I think that completes my system. Isn't that so cool looking? In the future, whenever I get more machines, such as a jointer, then I will modify things just slightly to incorporate them. Overall, it took not even two full days to set up everything I've shown you. So if you guys are committed to this hobby, then I definitely recommend making dust collection a priority and protecting those lungs. Big thank you to Clearview for coming down and supporting what I do. And those guys were cool enough to give me a 5% off coupon code to give to you guys. So if you have any dust collection needs, then head over to clearviewcyclones.com and use Welker Dues at checkout to get 5% off your purchase. 
that's it for this one. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thanks for coming along with me, and I'll see you soon.